Variables are properties or characteristics of some event, object, or person that can take on different values or amounts, as opposed to constants such as the mathematical constant pi, which do not vary. Let's look at a few examples. Here you can see three dogs of different breeds. Can you think of ways in which these three dogs vary? In other words, can you think of some properties or characteristics of these dogs that can take on different values or amounts? These three dogs vary in height, weight, color, length of hair, body shape, purpose for which they were bred, and so forth. Here are some dogs that vary on many dimensions. They vary on breed, height, weight, color, among other things. Here's another example. Can you think of ways these fish vary? Well, they vary in species, shape, weight, type of water they live in, salt water or fresh, etc. Now let's learn about variables in more depth. When conducting research, experimenters often manipulate variables. For example, an experimenter might compare the effectiveness of four types of antidepressants. When a variable is manipulated by an experimenter, it is called an independent variable. Therefore, type of antidepressant is an independent variable. In this example about antidepressants, the experimenter seeks to determine the effect of the independent variable, type of antidepressant, on the level of depression. The measure of the severity of depression is the dependent variable. The dependent variable is used to assess the effect of the independent variable. Dependent variables are sometimes called dependent measures. Identifying independent and dependent variables is one of the first tasks of a researcher, and initially many students find this task difficult. The easiest way to improve your ability to identify these variables is to practice, practice, practice. You will now get a chance for some practice. Example 1. Can blueberries slow down aging? A study indicates that antioxidants found in blueberries may slow down the process of aging. In the study, 19-month-old rats, equivalent to 60-year-old humans, were fed either their standard diet or a diet supplemented by either blueberry, strawberry, or spinach powder. After eight weeks, the rats were given memory and motor tests. Although all supplemented rats showed improvement, those supplemented with blueberry powder showed the most notable improvement. What is the independent variable? And what are the dependent variables? The independent variable is a variable that the experimenter manipulated, namely the rat's diet. There were four levels of the independent variable, the control, no supplement, blueberries, strawberries, and spinach powder. The dependent variables are the variable that measure the effects of the independent variable. In this case, the motor and memory tasks are the dependent variables. So the experimenter manipulated the rat's supplement intake and measured the effects of these different supplements, or no supplement, on motor and memory tasks. Learning to identify independent and dependent variables is a difficult task, so let's do another example. Example number two. Does beta-carotene protect against cancer? Beta-carotene supplements had been thought to protect against cancer, but a study published in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute suggests that it does not. The study was conducted with 39,000 women aged 45 and up. These women were randomly assigned to receive a beta-carotene supplement, or a placebo, and their health was studied over time. There was no evidence that taking the beta-carotene supplement affected their cancer rates. Once again, what is the independent variable? And what is the dependent variable? The independent variable is the variable that the experimenter manipulated, namely the supplement beta-carotene, or a placebo. There were two levels of the independent variable, the control, no supplement, and the beta-carotene. The dependent variable is the variable that measures the effects of the independent variable, in this case, cancer rate. So the experimenter manipulated the administration of beta-carotene and measured its effect on cancer rates. Let's do one more example. Example number three. How bright is right? An automobile manufacturer wants to know how bright brake lights should be to minimize the time required for the driver of a following car to brake. What is the independent variable? And what is the dependent variable? 
This is a more difficult example because fewer details are provided, giving you fewer clues. The independent variable is the variable that the experimenter manipulated, namely the brightness of the brake lights. Note that no details are given as to the brightness of the lights or how many levels of the independent variable were tested. The dependent variable is the variable that measures the effects of the independent variable, in this case, time to hit the brakes. So the experimenter manipulated the brightness of brake lights and measured the effect on driver stopping time. Variables can be either qualitative or quantitative. Qualitative variables are those that express a qualitative attribute such as hair color, eye color, religion, favorite movie, gender, and so on. The values of a qualitative variable do not imply any kind of ordering. Values of the variable religion differ qualitatively. No ordering of religions is implied. Quantitative variables are those variables that are measured in terms of numbers. Some examples of quantitative variables are height, weight, and shoe size. In the previously discussed study on the effect of blueberries in aging, the independent variable was type of supplement, none, strawberry, blueberry, and spinach. The variable type of supplement is a qualitative variable. There is nothing numeric about it. In contrast, the dependent variable, memory test score, is a quantitative variable since memory performance was measured on a quantitative scale, number correct. Another important distinction is between discrete and continuous variables. Discrete variables can take on only certain values. Continuous variables can, theoretically, take on any value within the range of the scale. Variables such as number of children in a household are called discrete variables since the possible scores are discrete points on a scale. For example, a household could have three children or six children, but not 4.53 children. Other variables, such as time to respond to a question, are continuous variables since a scale is continuous and not made up of discrete steps. The response time could be 1.64 seconds, or it could be 1.64237 seconds. Of course, the practicalities of measurement preclude most measured variables from being truly continuous.